Hey, it's Michael, and this is the Kintsugi Podcast. I'll be back in a minute with today's conversation about resilience. But first, if you're interested in creating a better life, having a better career, please visit kintsugipodcast.com and grab your free workbook on how to have a better life. In it, you'll discover tips and routines so you can find the energy for the things and the people who matter most so you can create a better tomorrow and create the life and career you desire. Hey there, it's Michael. Well, today I'm recording this on Labor Day here in the States, the weekend where we celebrate labor, physical and I'll add emotional labor to create change, hopefully change that sticks. And I get asked that question, how do you make change stick? Especially as it relates to the Kintsugi podcast, conversations about resilience. How do you get back up again after we have a hiccup, after we trip and stumble? Certainly I got asked about this multiple times during my corporate career, and now as an executive coach, people want to know, how do you do it? How do you make change stick so you can have that traction that creates a better tomorrow? Because I think where we sit right here with COVID, we want to create a better tomorrow. But change, as they say, is difficult. Well, for me, it all comes down to what's upstairs, what's in our head, if you will, It's that conversation that we have with ourselves. Here's the thing. Conversation is the red thread that makes everything happen. When you think about your life, when you think about this lovely planet that we're all on, nothing happens without a conversation. Some are electronic, email, text. Some are now pixelated through Zoom. Hopefully many will be one day face-to-face. But nothing happens without conversation. And the most important conversation we have every day, multiple times a day, is the conversation that we have with ourselves. If it's not healthy, then change usually doesn't stick. It doesn't gain the type of traction required to create the change that we wish to see in the world or to be resilient. So when we do fall down, we can get back up again with a little bit more wisdom so we can head in a slightly different direction. That's the big thing for me about resilience. It's not just falling down and getting back up. It's getting back up with more wisdom, more knowledge, so we can head in a slightly different direction, so we don't trip and fall the same way we just did. Now, this conversation that we have with ourselves is way personal. That's why so many corporate workshops don't work well enough, because they don't want to go deep enough. People don't want to be vulnerable with their colleagues and share that conversation, because it's usually not healthy. It has some doubt, it might have some guilt, some shame, or just hold this whole concept that we're just not enough, which is not true, but it's a conversation that we tend to have. I know I've had it. And six years ago, as we flip into this holiday weekend here in the States, I had to check in with the conversation I was having with myself. Because I was on the cusp of leaving behind my identity, and this is a big thing, my identity as a corporate leader to start an entrepreneurial journey. And I know one of the tough things with COVID is that we once had this identity, this order, if you will, although it wasn't necessarily working well enough for everyone, there was a sense of order, a sense of identity. And COVID has flipped us upside down and has shaken us violently And I think we've lost sense of like who we are. So when we're in that space, it's hard to know exactly how to go forward. That conversation with ourselves gets a little scary because we don't necessarily know what's out there. So we get stuck and we hold back. And so when I think about what happened six years ago, it would have been so easy for me to get close to the edge, this desire to leave my corporate world and sort of revert back and not make that big leap. Because the thing is, I was leaving behind a whole bunch of different things. A top 1% salary here in the States, a lot of perks, a lot of cool perks. I had corporate health care that I really didn't have to pay for, at least not that much. In essence, it was part of my job. I had that order I just referenced. 
Now, on a positive note, I did have this crazy boss, and I was about to leave behind a not so great boss, a no bueno boss, if you will. But I was leaving all that behind for a whole bunch of uncertainty of entrepreneurship. And I knew all the data that most businesses don't make it. Most businesses don't make it to six years. I also had this going on, two daughters who were rapidly approaching college. And if you have kids, maybe in college, post-college, or rapidly approaching college, you know college in the U.S. is not cheap. So yes, it would have been so easy for me to get close to the edge and turn back and not make that giant leap. Now, if my self-narrative wasn't healthy, that's probably what I would have done. But luckily, through my last bad day, accident and recovery, I've had a few years to work on that inner conversation. So today is a form of thank you. I know I've only been doing this for about six months, back in the beginning of March. And I've been blogging each week since I started Peloton Executive Coaching. And so whether you've joined our Peloton just recently through the Kintsugi Podcast or you've been a follower of mine from the very beginning, either way, or all points in between, I am so thankful that you're on this exciting ride with me. I'm so grateful I've made this great big leap. And it certainly hasn't been easy. We've had some no bueno moments, some moments where I thought, that's it, I'm going to pack it up. I'll just go back to corporate life. Thought I would never have another speaking gig, another client, where I got sort of down in the dumps, if you will. But here's the thing. When we get stuck like that, when we make the we greater than the me, it's easier to get unstuck. So this I know. It hasn't been easy, but I could not have done it without you. So whenever you joined our ride, I want to thank you for giving me a big we to overcome some of the doubt that I had over the last six years. And I am so grateful and excited about the miles that we'll ride together going forward. Now, folks will tell you some advice, maybe as you come out of university, come out of college, what have you, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. But you know what? That's just not true. Because once you find what you love, you'll work on it almost every day of the year. And it won't feel like work. It will feel like love. It will feel like true, impeccable love. To quote The Princess Bride, one of my favorite movies. Even the challenging moments, the real hard ones, where you think about giving up, where there's tension, that will also feel like love. Because true love has some space for some tension. That's where we get the best growth. That's how we become even more resilient tomorrow than we are today. So during the last six years, I've worked on this passion almost every day, taking a few days off. Now, part of that push, that pursuit, has been really practical as an entrepreneur. Because as an entrepreneur, and if you're an entrepreneur, you will get this. You eat what you kill. And as a vegetarian, that is a weird thing to say, but I think you get the idea. In order to be successful, you have to put in some sweat. Doesn't happen otherwise. So I have worked on this a lot over the last six years to turn it into something that I think is magical, at least from my perspective. I hope you will agree. But I've also taken my moments to get my pause, breathe, and reflect on. You've heard me talk about grabbing your PBR. That's our type pause, breathe, and reflect so I can release those rocks that may have accumulated in my backpack, renew my energy, and then return to my passion. In order to have success, yes, we have to put in sweat, but we also have to recover as hard as we work. If not, there are some dire consequences downstream. So as I did back in my corporate days, now recording this on Labor Day, but you'll get this midweek. It's actually something you should do, in my opinion, every day, not just during holidays. But before holiday weekends here in the States, I would send a voicemail out to my full team. I had a team of about a thousand people. And I would encourage them 
to get their pause, breathe, and reflect on. Because I knew they were putting forth a lot of emotional labor. That's the labor that we have when we're dancing with that self-narrative that we have. And obviously, physical labor, they were out doing the work. But I wanted them to recover. I wanted them to take a moment just to pause, connect with their breath, slow things down, and reflect on what they saw in their life that they were grateful for, where they saw maybe opportunities like this moment here, that maybe it's not happening to us, it's happening for us. Reflect on almost anything. Just reflect on the the miracle of nature, the miracle of this planet. Now, the last six months, as we all know, have been nothing like we could have ever predicted. Nothing like this in our lifetime have we experienced. And here's the thing. We've been working more over the last six months. We're actually working for those that still have a job about two to three hours longer each day because we don't have a commute. And a whole bunch of people far too many people don't even have a job. Their full-time job now is looking for a job in one of the worst economies in our lifetime, actually the worst economy in our lifetime. So if we don't take some time to chill, I believe we're headed for burnout or even worse. The worst part is really this, that life will feel worse than work. It will feel just like a grind that you're trying to survive. I got into this world. I started my entrepreneurial journey because I wanted to make work suck less for the workers. Because I believe when we change how we work together, we will change how we live together. And right now, we need to understand how to be together better. We need to figure out a way to trust again. One of the things I've never forgotten from my dad, when I became a leader, a formal leader, he said, You need to earn people's trust if they're going to follow you as a leader. Remember this, Mike. He calls me Mike. They don't work for you. You work for them. And that was one of those valuable lessons that I just wanted to make work a better place for them. And hopefully I was successful a good number of times. There are plenty of times where I wasn't. I goofed up like any human would goof up. But you learn from that, right? That's part of being resilient. I fell down plenty of times in my corporate life, but I got back up with a greater sense of purpose that we're going to drive some change that can make tomorrow better than today. Now, this whole concept of grabbing your pause, breathe, and reflect, if your self-narrative is hardwired to believe that you always have to be working, that's how you have value in this world. I would say you provide value. Maybe we don't even know each other. But I will say this. Your value is just not solely based on your job. That's not your full identity. But let's just say you have that self-narrative. That you have to do more to be more. Then doing nothing, grabbing your pause, breathe, and reflect, may give you an allergic reaction. But I'm hoping through listening to this, just with a little shift in perspective, that you can appreciate that doing nothing is actually something. It's called recovery, or as folks would say today, it's self-care. And it's one of the smartest things you can do as a leader, as a worker, and it's essential if you wish to create a better tomorrow. It's vital if you want to create some change that truly sticks. And right now, we need some change that's going to stick so we can create the change that we wish to see in the world. But if we're always working, if we're always on, on that hamster wheel, just reacting to what's coming to us, and we don't take a moment to slow it down, I'm worried that we won't become resilient. We won't get back up again because we'll burn out. Or if we do get back up again, we don't necessarily get back up with the type of wisdom that we need to head in a slightly different direction. Because whatever we were doing in the past before COVID hit wasn't working well enough. And now we have this beautiful opportunity to head in a slightly different direction to create the type of world that we wish to see. So again, whenever you joined our Peloton, if you just found me through the Kintsugi podcast, Conversations About Resilience, thank you. If you've been on this journey, this bike ride with me, 
since the very beginning, since back in 2014, September 2014, all six years, thank you for any point in between. I could not have done this without you. And I'm so excited about where we're going to travel together. So thanks for watching my videos, reading my blog, listening to this podcast. Hopefully you'll hit the subscribe button, maybe check us out on YouTube. If you don't get my blog, you can go to my website, michaelobrienshift.com and sign up. You can also get the Better Life Workbook there. And while you're there, you can also check out our leadership academy called the Paceline Leadership Academy. You can also check that out on the kintsugipodcast.com. That's where you can leave a question about almost anything, and I will do my best to give you an answer on your almost anything. But I hope you have a beautiful week ahead. I hope you'll share this with someone. Let someone know that we exist so we can build our connection. We can build our Peloton of difference makers who are resilient, who wish to change the world for the better. And until next week, remember to pause, breathe, and reflect because it's so much easier to have fun storm in the castle when you do. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.